So I've been making documentary films since the 1980s. Um, I always wanted to be a writer, but sort of sidled into filmmaking when I was in graduate school. And I started out working for Frontline, the PBS series on current affairs, and then I went to Blackside to work on Eyes on the Prize, which about the civil rights movement, which really shaped all of us um, and inspired us to tell history from the bottom up instead of the top down mm. and to listen to the voices of people who normally don't get listened to and to tell their story and the way that social change happens through ordinary people, not just from people at the top. And then I went to the American Experience and I worked there for a while and then jumped off and became an independent producer. And all of the films which I've done on my own have been about extraordinary, ordinary women and communities of women and the kinds of communities that women build. And the first film was based on the diary of an 18th century midwife and healer who moved to Maine during the American Revolution and kept a daily diary oh, wow. for 27 years. So it's an incredible window onto early American right. history. And my next film was about the early years of Tupperware back in the 1950s, which is also a great story and very much a women's story. It's about a women's economy and also a women's community and a, a way of living as much as a way of sort of selling. Um, and so I'm always interested in telling the stories of women. I don't think there are nearly enough stories about women that make it to the screen and especially women who aren't celebrities or famous already. Um, but the stories of large communities of women that don't get taken seriously, uh -huh. in fact, are frequently mocked because what they're doing is something that's normally done by women. And most activities that are by women and for women and about uh -huh. women, right? Well, women, many women I interviewed said that they will be on the beach or they'll be at the, you know, on a train and a complete stranger will walk up to them and say, why do you read that trash? And I don't think that a man or a woman would walk up to a man reading Stephen King or Baldacci or a fantasy book and say, why do you read that trash? Mm -hmm. So what is the difference? I mean, there are good mysteries and bad mysteries. There's good sci-fi and bad sci-fi. There's good romance and bad romance. But people don't feel that all of these other genres are just trash and feel entitled to say that. And I think that it is because it's by women and it's for women and it's about women. And that's what leads people to dismiss it. And the other comment I would hear all the time is, oh, but they're so formulaic. <laughs> And okay. I'd say, well, There's a reason for that. what about mystery? Yeah. You've got a dead body at the beginning. Guaranteed it will be solved by the Absolutely. end. Absolutely. Or sci-fi, you've got alien invaders. The good guys will win in the end. Western, right. the good guys win in the end. Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone. I mean, all of these genre stories. Right. And with the, the good, good wins out over bad. Mm -hmm and love and courage and loyalty and all of these important virtues are what get you your happy ending. Right. And romance is no different that way.